All right, guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about the comic book industry. We're going to talk about comicsology uh, promising to do better. They're promising to do better. Yeah, comicsology broke uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Amazon integrated comicsology into Kindle and into the uh, larger Amazon site. It's become like, you know, Kindle Comics. Yeah, and it's absolute trash. Uh, it's horrible. It's worse than I thought it was. We we talked about it in a previous video. People were upset that they were uh, they basically broke in the um, user experience and the front end, and they've also changed their terms of service. Uh, it's really not good. I mean, like when I'm saying not good, I'm like it's freaking terrible. And I actually went in and, and checked out some of my own digital comics. Uh, you know, later on, I'm like some of them are just absolutely unreadable. So it looks like they're walking back some of their decisions, uh, promising to fix the user interface. But there are some other issues with Comixology right now. Of course, you know, since they've rolled it into Kindle, the uh, profit share is different um, than it was before. And I don't think they're going to roll that back. I think they were kind of using the opportunity to make sure that uh, creators get less money and they get the same amount of money that a Kindle author would get. So we're going to talk about this, uh, this update before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys over 259,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Geeky is sitting this one out. She usually doesn't care about comic book industry numbers videos, and we're not really going to talk about the numbers so much, but I think the, the numbers did drop off a cliff. Um, you know, going out to bleeding cool, uh, according to Rich Johnson, the digital sales were dropping. I'm sure they were because if people are like, I can't even, I can't even read my damn comics. Why would you, why would you invest more money in comicsology if the comics are unreadable? Uh, lots of people talking about it. This is coming from Gizmodo. Uh, comicsology promises fixes and updates after disastrous Amazon integration. Again, Pat Oswalt, not a huge fan of him, uh, not a huge fan of his his hot takes, but. You know, he's like, how hard would it be to just roll it back? You know, um, yeah, <laughs> good question. Good question. A week after a controversial update merges, uh, merged the site closer with Amazon storefront, the largest digital comics retailer has offered a lengthy apology. Last week, Comixology launched a 4.0 update that radically overhauled the biggest digital storefront in comics, a new app that replaced the original bespoke mobile experience with a Kindle-esque format and the loss of Comixology's own website in exchange for a presence within its owner, Amazon's website. We knew that was going to happen. They announced it a year or two ago. Uh, it did not go well. It could have been a seamless transition. It didn't go well. They basically just dumped everything in the Kindle. In a lengthy Twitter thread today, the first time Comixology tweeted since a similarly large thread about the initial launch of the 4.0 app and web experience, the publisher acknowledged the strong blowback from users and comics creatives about the many changes made by the integration of Comixology into Amazon's marketplace. A thread. Oh my God, a thread. Let's, let's read the thread. Let's view in thread reader. Okay, here we go. Update from the team on Comixology 4. We want to take a moment to address the transition to our new app and comics web store experience. We know this process has been far from seamless, and we've heard your feedback. We understand how important improving the web reader experience is, and we are working as fast as possible to implement those improvements. This is our top priority right now. You had years, years to get this right, and it was a very simple thing to get right. I mean, Comixology actually worked. Uh, it worked. And you broke it. I don't understand why. We've already rolled out an update to the Fire OS app, and we are working on a bug fix for books that aren't loading in HD. We're making a number of other updates, prioritizing fast incremental improvements to ease the hardest pain points. Except for the profit share. <laughs> Except for the percentage that creators get. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. Soon we'll be rolling out updates to our new releases filter on the new releases page across web and app so the filters work correctly. In the meantime, we'll keep the more new releases category up to date with all new releases for the week. It was so much easier to find what you're looking for. While we work on these and other refinements, we wanted to highlight some things we've heard customers couldn't find but which are still available in the new Comixology experience. Uh, guided view is still available in the app reading experiences. Just double tap a panel to enter or exit guided view. 
You actually have to show people it's still available. That's a failure. That is a massive failure. People have been using Comixology for years, and you have to show them that it's still available. That means you you done fucked up. I'm sorry. All your purchases are available via the accounts page, along with the DRM-free downloads for books purchased prior to the 4.0 update. We'll be adding navigation to your account from the main store page soon. Should have had it at launch. Moving to the new code base and away from our dedicated web experience was a tough call, but it's an important step toward our long-term goal to share our love of comics, manga, and graphic novels, and to reach more lifelong fans, and also to downsize our staff. No, um, that probably was a motivator. I don't think digital comics make a ton of money for Amazon. I really don't. And it's not really that important. And they're like, yeah, it's a redundancy. We, ha- we have Kindle. Let's just throw the comics on Kindle. We hear your feedback. We recognize that there's a lot to be done. We appreciate your patience and support while we do everything we can to bring you the experience we envision. More to come. Love the Comixology team. Far From Seamless has applied to both aspects of the unpopular relaunch. That is true. Aside from changes to the app, confusion over which led readers to believe tools like Comixology's panel-by-panel guided view option had been removed. It's now just accessed by double-tapping a panel instead of having a dedicated button. And changes to library filtering that made large comics collections unwieldy to navigate. Uh, The mobile launch saw bugs that prevented some users from accessing large Uh, groups of their previously purchased comics. That's not good. Remember, guys, you're only renting these comics. They could disappear at any time, I'm just saying. Perhaps the most profound change has been in browsers, both navigating Comixology's Amazon integrated storefront plagued with bugs, uh, made it impossible to see more than a few dozen new releases out of hundreds of comics, as well as unintuitive ways to access your library, etc., etc. Several incoming changes, none of which were given an ETA, uh, include fixing the storefront's new release filter. Uh, we get it. They fucked up. They know they fucked up. And I think it affected their sales, according to Rich Johnston from Bleeding Cool. Um, you know, his Comixology answers criticism as digital sales drop by a huge amount. Uh, We're getting more Comixology complaints to join the litany that Bling Cool has been reporting in recent days from all over the place. Comixology has not responded to Bleeding Cool's many press inquiries made over the last couple weeks, nor will they. They probably won't. They're Amazon. This isn't like, this isn't like, you know, Black Mask or Volt Comics. This is Amazon. They don't give a shit. Uh, They did issue a response to the litany of complaints on social media yesterday. Comixology representatives stated, this is coming from Twitter. This doesn't address the many issues people had with buying and discovering new comic books. That's true. Uh, Comixology, they actually would, you know, feature new comics collections. Uh, If you wanted to look for books, now I don't know if it's changed that much in the app. I mean, I was just going through some of the books I had already purchased. I don't intend on purchasing anymore, especially with Comixology in the state that it's in right now. But if if you went out there and you wanted like, hey, I want I want books by this colorist or this letterer. You could do it. You could find all the stuff they worked on. It was great. And uh, that is not the case now, I, I guess, from what I've heard. Um, yeah, the biggest problem though is the money, I think. Uh, many issues facing international customers, such as subscribing to series not addressed. The mention change will be welcomed by creators, readers, and especially publishers. Uh, he says he has spoken to a number of comic book publishers who have told me their digital sales have dropped by anywhere from 20 to 70% as a result of the change. I would agree with that because I am no longer buying. I think all my subscriptions were canceled. I don't know. But I have no intention of buying any more digital comics. I don't buy a lot of digital comics anyway. Uh, I've been buying more trades and I've definitely been buying more manga. And if I read digital comics, mostly I'm reading on the Shonen Jump app because it's like two bucks for all you can read. And I, I love it. Uh, and it's also very easy to navigate, but I, you know, yeah, I would, I would not buy comics on Comicsology at this point because if they're unreadable, you know, you're, it's like, what's the point? What's the freaking point? So it'll be interesting to see if more people come out and, and say, Hey, you know, uh, we're done with Comicsology. but here's, here's the thing. And I, I, I brought this up the other day and this isn't necessarily just Comicsology. But it's getting to a place, <laughs> it's getting to a place where you're not allowed to publish your shit anywhere, either because the platform is broken, the system is broken, um, or you're not allowed to because it's it's verboten. 
You know, uh, I think uh, Zach actually did a video talking about how everything is broken in comics right now. And it is. I mean, top to bottom, it's like everything is broken. Manga's doing well. Young adult graphic novels are doing well. Webtoon's doing well. But the North American direct market uh, comic book industry is just, it's in freaking shambles right now. I mean, look at this. You can't, because of places being verboten for a number of reasons, you can't use Kickstarter because of NFTs. You can't use Indiegogo to crowdfund your books because that's where all the Nazis go. You can't use Gumroad because of crypto and NFTs. Or Substack because the Nazis are on Substack. <laughs> you can't use YouTube because they're YouTube Nazis. If you use if you use YouTube and you're critical of comics, you're you're banned from the industry. And now you can't use Comicsology because the shit's just just broken. You know, and I'm surprised there's not another issue. Like it's owned by Amazon, and Amazon's bad. I give up. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, you know, whatever. It's it's. I think it'll get fixed eventually. The market will course correct all all of this, I believe. But it could take some time. In the meantime, just keep making your comics, right? You'll find a way to sell them. Uh, don't be afraid of what other people tell you to do or or not to do. Because um, ultimately, at the end of the day, you're responsible for you. You're responsible for getting onto a life raft yourself. Uh, don't worry about the other people, especially if they're trying to push you out of the damn boat. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.